No matter whether you're using a 3D printer, laser cutter or CNC machine, they sadly do not speak English. So telling them to cut out or print a box does not result in any uh, action by them. Instead, what they speak is G-code. And being able to read some of it yourself might actually be really beneficial. Hey guys, David here and welcome to Make a Software, the weekly series in addition to my project videos where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY project. What you can see here is the beginning of a 3D printer file and uh, on first glance it might look like gibberish, uh, but actually it is fairly easy to read once you know a couple of the basics. Before I go into all the details uh, though, let me show you what a laser cutter file looks like. That's almost the same. And here's a file for the CNC. Once again, the commands look extremely similar. That's because it all is basically the same code. All your basic movement uh, codes will be essentially the same, no matter whether you're controlling a 3D printer, CNC or laser or any other kind of machine that runs G-code. However, there are some specialized commands that might be supported by one, but not by the other. Different controllers might also have slightly different preferences on how the code is formatted, but that is not something you need to worry about since that is handled by the program, and uh, they are all about the same to read. For this video, let's focus more on 3D printer G-code though, as that is uh, almost the most interesting. If you want to know all the different commands and what exactly they do, then this video is not for you. Instead, I'm going to have the Marlin uh, wiki linked down below where all of the different G codes are explained and with great detail. So if you have any sort of detailed questions, that will be where to go. I will also have some other uh, repositories linked, for example, for Mark 3 here. And if you compare the two, you'll see that it, they are essentially the same, uh, just maybe some slight uh, tiny differences. But let's head back uh, to our code. What you can see here in the beginning are some comments. Any line that has a semicolon in front of it uh, is a comment. So everything behind that will be completely ignored by the controller. Most 3D printer slicers uh, will uh, put some of the settings and other uh, things up on the top. So uh, when you look at the G-code file, you know what it was sliced with. And uh, this is also a great way that if you get some G-code to find out what settings were used. After that is kind of the starting G-code. This is uh, the G-code that is executed before the print actually starts. It makes sure that uh, all the settings uh, on the printer are correct. For example, the Prusa uh, slicer uh, makes sure that uh, the right model uh, is selected uh, in the slicer uh, so that the machine fits. It also makes sure that the nozzle uh, the controller thinks is installed is the same nozzle that Gco thinks is installed. So just some basic things to make sure that everything will go smoothly afterwards. After that, the first kind of main uh, line of G-code is this G91. Now all commands with a G in front of it are related to movement. Down here uh, you'll see a bunch of G1 commands. That is the basic movement command. Uh, whereas a G0 is also a movement command, uh, but is more used for rapid moves, which is not as important in 3D printers, but in CNC's, uh, your G0s would be when it is not engaged in a cut and just moving between two things, whereas a G1 is when it is actually cut. But let's uh, go back up here. This G90 means using absolute coordinates. That means that you are always referencing the same origin point and saying if you x50, y50 is the a specific point on a platform. Whereas if you were using uh, relative coordinates, saying x50 would mean uh, 50 over to compared to where you are right now. So if you are already at x50 and then send another x50 command, it will go uh, another 50. So in absolute coordinates, that would be then be x100. For the most part, uh, absolute coordinates are used, uh, but for some uh, things, like if you just want to move up your Z by 10 millimeters, uh, no matter uh, where you are, it might be convenient to know uh, how to get to relative coordinates as well. Then here you can uh, see the setting of the temperature that is done with M commands. M commands are uh, either settings or other auxiliary commands like uh, setting temperatures, or maybe turning on and off a fan, or turning on and off uh, a spindle, or coolant, or whatever else you might have going on. For 3D printers, uh, there is a different uh, command to just set a temperature, and set a temperature and wait. Just setting a temperature will then continue on, and not wait for it to actually heat up to that temperature. However, if you uh, set uh, this, for example, M190, 
as 65 means set the bed to 65 degrees and wait uh, until it actually reaches 65 degrees. And only then it will move on to the next line and set the extruder to 225 and then wait. You can also see if we scroll down a little bit that uh, most slices will add comments uh, in all uh, throughout the G-code, just to make it a bit easier for you to read. For example, here uh, it will say type perimeter, that means that the following G-code uh, is for a perimeter and then if we scroll down a bit it says external perimeter and so it is actually very simple uh, to figure out what it is doing. After the g command which is saying the movement command you have your x and your y coordinates and potentially a z if that changes however if the z just stays the same there's no need to specify it. In 3D printing the e command uh, means how much the extruder should extrude. You could also add an F behind that and that would be the speed. But uh, here uh, the speed is set uh, separately first. Now let's have a look at where it might be useful uh, to know some basic G-code. I mean for one you can analyze uh, your 3D printer files, uh, but that might not be as interesting. But if you go into Pusher Slicer here, uh, I'm in the printer settings and in the custom G-code, that is where the start and end G-code is. The same uh, kind of settings can also be set in Cura or any other slicer. This is the G-code that you just saw that is in the beginning of the file. And with the new knowledge that we just learned here, we can see that here is, are those uh, heat up commands. And if we wanted to change any of those, uh, this is where we could do that. And now you know what you can change and what the effect of that will be. You can also see if we continue on a bit. Here there's a G1 command uh, going to Y minus three. It says here, go outside of print area and then intro line. That is the little line that uh, the Prusa printers do in the beginning. And if you, for example, wanted to uh, have that line shorter or longer, here you could change that and now you know how. Also here on the NG code, uh, some uh, printers just stop, some printers move the back of the printer, some uh, move up a bit more. If you want to change that behavior in the NG code, uh, you could do that. First you need uh, to do like the basic things like turning off the extruder uh, and the heated bed uh, just to make sure that nothing uh, bad happens. Uh, but for example here you can see that uh, the pusher by default uh, goes ahead and homes the x-axis. And maybe you don't want that, maybe you just want to move up and stay in the same place, then you could remove that line. And then in the very end uh, it sends an aim 84, uh, which just disables the separate motors. If you do not send that, the motors will hold their position and make sure that uh, they don't move. Because after this is turned off, uh, you can just by hand move the things very easily. And then uh, the machine does not know anymore where it is and needs to be home first before it can do any more movements. So I hope this little intro gave you an idea of what this mysterious G-code is that your machines are using and uh, allow you to kind of uh, understand what is going on and if you have any problems you can maybe figure out if it is a problem of the slicer and it outputs some weird G-code or if it is a different issue. If you like this video make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you guys next week with another video.